Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Easy Come, Easy Go. There's a playlist up there as a series of stories in which I take a guitar or several and trade them up to something that's more desirable, at least to me, and that can encompass just about anything. I am on 62nd Street East, directly south of Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles, and we are, the flight path to the airport is right up here. These buildings were built in 1929, opened in 1929. They're all brick buildings. And some of them have an art deco-y curvy thing here. Kind of like there's some art deco on this guitar case. So why are we here? Well, part of what's in this case was built, I believe, in this building, this very building right here in the early 1930s. So. What's going on here? Well, there were two people that formed a partnership. One of them was a vaudevillian, and he was looking for a guitar maker that would be able to amplify the sound of a guitar, and I think he was looking for what we know to be the coil. There was a che Czechoslovakian immigrant who was one of a number of brothers who had figured out how to put a cone or a speaker like kind of what you would see in a Victrola, a horn, inside of a guitar body, one, two, maybe even three of them. So the vibration would amplify out of the guitar. So they had a partnership for a couple of years. And then one morning, the Czechoslovakian person, I think who was doing most of the work, just decided as the foreman of the factory, I'm done, walked out, set up shop for a couple months, not too far from here, and then moved into this building and began development of guitars and parts thereof to supply to other guitar manufacturers. In other words, we would put parts of what we're doing into another manufacturer's guitar. That was in 1929, and that's where our story starts with what's in this case. Let's take the next stop to figure out how did I get this guitar and what did I trade for it? The Rob's on a Friday night. It's been a great night for me. We brought in some traders. None of these. This is what's on the wall. If he doesn't have it, I don't know what to tell you. There's everything in here you could possibly want. But Tam and I brought in a truckload of guitars. There we go, 1960 Harmony H12. We got Davidson single cutaway, arch top. We've got a K resonator in good shape. This is a J Terser body. And then we get into everybody's favorite Christmas guitar, the Silver Tone. Kentucky Blue Bob Log Special Clean One Owner. I think the king of the bunch is this one in this avocado green case. Let me pop this one open. This is one I've had for a while. You saw it on an episode called Hector's Guitar. There it is. 1958 airline it was the equivalent of the k pacer clean one owner original everything speed bump pickups original knobs or whatever see you later we got something else going on now this is a lot of driving around california picking up guitars here and there and they'll come into rob's and they'll end up with some work in a nice home to somebody that is looking for something affordable and dependable. Rob's over there doing the paperwork now or after. All right, guys. Let's slow down just a minute because I'm not sure that you saw what was in the case that I'm making a big stink about. 
Okay, first off, take a look at this case. It's all Art deco -y. It's very old, and it says 1932 Regal R-E-S on it. So, let's have a look. Bear with me, I got like extra rags on the ground and stuff here. This is like a one of the magic moments. So I'm being really careful. Let's get out the rag here. This people is what I paid the equivalent of five guitars for. And they were okay guitars. I mean, some of them were acoustic. I kind of gave you the rundown about that. But this one is a Regal Resonator from about 1932. Now, how do I know that it's a Regal? Well, remember that first place we stopped at? Yeah, they built cones there. So my big question before I do the run through on this is this. If this was made by Regal, who had a factory in Chicago, how can I be claiming that this resonator cone was built in Los Angeles? That makes no sense. So we're gonna ask ourselves that question again towards the end of the episode. What evidence do I have that says that that's true? Well, we're going to make a couple more episodes and we'll probably have a playlist about this guitar called the 1932 Resonator and it'll be up there. And uh, anyway, it's got this kind of tuners. They're different. Butterbean tuners. It's got a slotted headstock. It's got kind of a pronounced V neck from things of that era. You can tell it's been played. I think it's got the original knot. The tuners are great. It's 12 frets to the body and it's flat top and bottom but it's got F holes up here. Some of them had this round screen thing on it. Uh, paint on binding this was a poor person's guitar twenty two dollars and fifty cents in 1932 depression was was going on stock market had crashed wages dropped 40 percent if you could find a job unemployment was through the roof average wage in the country is 40 cents an hour yeah, $22.50 back then was a, an extravagant purchase. Anyway, there it is. Now, something I want to tell you, you should probably look this up. It says 1896484, it's a patent number. Look it up. You'll find that it goes back to someone named Rudy Dopiera. Rudy Dopiera was in that factory we just visited before we went to Rob's. And he's going to be associated to the next place we go to. But it says right under that number again, 1896484, other patents pending. Something tells me that when this was built, there was some squabbling going on. I touched on that while I was sitting in front of the brick building. Anyway, this is what it is. It's a wooden bodied resonator with what I believe is a dopier a cone. Let's go to the next stop. It's going to get real interesting now. It's already interesting. It's on my channel. Guys, the old guitar and I have made another stop and you're not gonna believe 
what I'm about to tell you because the next place we're going is someone that you all know from the channel. But believe this or not, in the 1970s, the person we're going to see actually used to visit this place and speak with Rudy Dopier, who was in his 80s by then, and a couple of people who used to assemble guitars here under the brand name Hound Dog. And this was before things would go to Huntington Beach and ultimately be sold to um, Gibson. Anyway, I am on Gaylord Avenue in Long Beach, California, cultural capital of the world at what used to be a factory, a Dopiera factory. You're not gonna believe this. Small world, people, small world. Let's hit the next stop. All right, here I am again. My episodes are so Socratic, I meaning you have to figure it out yourself. I give you a bunch of obtuse clues and then you figure it out for yourself and then I change something at the end and it's like, no, you're still wrong. No, you're doing really well, I can see it. Um, so, yeah, I had to find out that address I just went to from some guy in England, even though somebody I know had been there but couldn't remember where it was. Who was that guy? Well, the 1970s were 80, 90, 2000, 210, 50 years ago. It's a wonder he didn't remember, but he sold the guitars that were made in that building on his wall. You know him, you love him. Guess who? See if you can guess. Here he comes. Oh boy, this is good. Okay, so somebody repaired the case, right? And where they glued it back on, they glued it on uh, too short so that it won't go all the way open. That's easy to fix. Oh, by the way, this checking, no doubt it was made in the winter in a cold shop. Because this is a different kind of weather checking. This, this is real typical of something that was lacquered in a cold, cold shop. You want to see what would happen if we... Okay, let's have some fun. So let's see what we got. Oh yeah, oh yeah.
So this quadrant up here is the one we were working on. And, you know, obviously, you know, if I have the resonator off, I mean, the, the uh, you know, the cover, um, I could get to where the screws are and so on and so on. But, you know, so also need to keep it folky, you know. But that's pretty cool. It came out, you know, it's coming out nice. Kenny's going to do all the rest. And, and we could really get to even more of this finish if we wanted to. Um, you know, I didn't want to proceed with, I wanted to proceed with caution, so I stopped right there, but we could have gone on more. Anyway, so it is. All right, guys, let's bring this to a close. I really enjoy episodes like this because it sends me off on a wild goose chase. Uh, it takes care of my dopamine needs with that ADHD. Yeah, I said it. You might have it too. It's what makes us good. Anyway, you never know what's going to happen to Fred's. I was shooting some footage that day about a young guitar virtuoso. He started off when he was about 10 playing electric guitar. He had deals with Gibson and Fender and other people by the time he was 12 and 15 years old. And then he switched to classical guitar and he is something else. His name is Garrett Podgorski, P-O-D-G-O-R-S-K-I. Garrett Podgorski. Get to your whoever selling you your music find his preludes album preludes it's great it'll put you to sleep it's great stuff anyway since we were shooting him playing a guitar i just got this bright idea i'll just hand him this it wasn't tuned who knows i just handed it to him and said see what you can do with this he looked at it and you're going to see what happened right now. So thanks, everybody. Give me a like if you like this kind of episode. Give me a comment below. And let's see what Garrett can do with this guitar and a cone that was made in Los Angeles somewhere about 1932.
Oh. Uh-huh.